So Shamir, how was it returning my serve? Uh, your serve was very difficult to return because it was fast um, and it was difficult to read. It was difficult to read? Yeah, I didn't know <laughs> if to go to the backhand or the forehand. Yeah, listen, the good news is you probably won't face serves like that at the 4.5 level. But there's some general tips that you can do if someone happens to have a big serve. So one thing that people do, they're very stubborn about this, is they will stand too close to the baseline. So where's your normal return of serve positioning? Show me. Um, for a first serve, about right here. You're standing right here. And a lot of people are stubborn about this. So they'll position themselves in the same place regardless of the incoming serve. Okay. So you ever watch Rafa? Yeah. Now yeah. you notice sometimes you can't even see him on camera. Yeah. Like the camera can't catch him. He's almost sitting on the Lions judge's chair. That's how far back he is. Now he's doing this for a reason because he wants to give himself more time to react to a big serve. And this is something that I could recommend. You have to be fluid in the way you're positioning yourself on the return of serve. Why would you stand here and give yourself less time to react to a big serve? Simply back up and right away you're building time into your return of serve. You have much better chances to get it back in play. When you back up, you hit that, that short angle slice well you listen you can't overthink it yes of course you've given up the angle but most of the time the serve is coming through the court that angle is kind of hard to catch sometimes so you you are going to give up something so if you stand closer of course you're protecting an angle but then you're very vulnerable to having less time when the serve comes really big so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to serve to you okay. and i want you to simply back up a little bit and give yourself more time okay okay shamir you're close again back up oh, yeah, back it up come on give yourself time Nice return, very good. Nice shot, Shamir, very good. There were some good returns there, but also some mistakes. So let me give you some general tips on the return of serve that you should definitely follow. So usually what I recommend on the return of serve, if the serve is coming with a lot of pace, that you take a quarter take back and also a quarter turn. A lot of players will shorten the take back, but they'll make a full turn and now they can't get out of this turn. So when you're returning, you basically are in a ready position. You're gonna see the ball coming and you're gonna take a quarter take back and a quarter turn like this. And now you have a really good chance to make that contact in front. Quarter turn, quarter swing. Now you're making a zero turn. Make a quarter turn. Quarter this turn. Is, look, this is a full turn, full turn. This is half a turn and this is a quarter turn. So look, in a quarter turn, I'm still turned to the side. Like here? Yeah, like this. And when it comes to the backswing, it's the same thing. The full backswing is gonna be here, there's gonna be half a backswing, and there's gonna be a quarter backswing. So on a fast serve, you adjust the amount of backswing. So if you get a second serve that's super soft, like this, this is a second serve, you can take a full swing. And now if I give you a faster serve, you do a quarter swing. And anything in between, that's all right, anything in between, you can adjust the amount of the backswing okay. according to the speed of the serve. So in this case, because I'm not giving you a lot of time, I'm bouncing the ball right in front of you. You're going to take a quarter take back also with a quarter turn. What do I do with my feet? Should I step in? Because I'm like stepping in. Like yeah, this is, that. That's actually a really, really, really good question. So stepping in makes absolutely no sense on the return unless the, the player is serving like a slice that's, that's going away from you into the court. You might be able to cut the angle off. Okay. But in the vast majority of cases, when the guy is serving flat through the court, it makes no sense to step, step towards in. that ball because you're reducing the amount of time between the ball and your racket. Yeah, he's giving it to me. I don't need it. It makes no Take sense. Don't step towards the ball when the ball is coming fast. Why would you do this? You don't need to. Unless he's serving slice, you need to cut off the angle. Then you can step, step forward. Okay. So just, if you need to step to adjust, step to the side. Make a lateral step, okay? Like that's like this? Yeah, that's a lateral step. But don't okay. step towards the ball, you have less time. Better. Much better, Shamir. That was a really good return there. Thank you. So Nick, when it comes to the split step, like how do I know which variation to choose? Because I know there's a few different options. You can split forward, you can just stay stationary, or you can even kind of split back. So how do I know which one is like 
the right one to go for? Okay, so that's a really good question. And there's a few different ways to do it. And I'm gonna also show you the best way to do it. So what Andy Murray does is he will be in a ready position and then he will start going forward a little bit prior to the contact. And it will end up making a step forward so that when he lands, he has like an automatic move. So when you take a step forward, it's almost like losing balance. You will make an automatic move towards the ball. And that is a, a good method. But what I find with a lot of recreational level players is they are reducing the time towards the ball. So they're making the timing more difficult because they're going forward. Yeah. What's a lot better thing to do is what Djokovic does, basically just kind of hopping in place like this. You see this? You're just kind of hopping in place. And then when the other person is about to make contact, this is when you, when you do the split step and then you react uh, to the ball. Okay. The problem on your return right now is that you're trying to go down the line. So I want you from now on, when the serve is coming fast, you're gonna take the center of the court as your target. You're gonna return everything right through the middle of the court. Okay. And you know who else does that? Djokovic, Agassi, they return a lot of their balls right through the center of the court. So the few advantages you have from that is the biggest target in the court. So if you hit the ball a little bit late and you're aiming for the middle, you'll probably end up being a down the line winner. Well, nobody will know that. You can just pretend like you aimed down the line and you hit a winner, but in fact, you actually aimed through the middle of the court, but you just hit it late. So that's the advantage of picking a big target like the middle of the court. Okay. And also what I find, if you hit the ball very deep and hard through the middle, and the other person has very bad angles to work with, the next ball that comes back is probably gonna be weaker and you'll be able to attack the ball. Great return. So Shamir, when you're taking that quarter take back and a quarter turn, it's important that you finish your stroke all the way. So your turn needs to finish like a regular forehand and even on the back end, you need to try to finish it all the way. A lot of players will be very short in the finish. They're scared to finish because they think they're gonna miss. And I see a little bit of that when you're playing now, you're kind of very gentle here, you're massaging the ball. Quarter take back, but then a full finish. I want the acceleration to be there so you can put some spin on your return, okay? Okay. All right, come on. Oh. <sighs> nice shot. Oh. In. Oh. Nice. Oh. Nice. Oh. Oh. Nice. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh. Best return so far. Nice job. So Shamir, when you decide where to go on the return, are you trying to anticipate the ball by reading the opponent or reading the toss or anything like that? Yeah, I look at the toss and based on where the toss is positioned, that kind of tells me if it's going to go to the forehand or to the backhand. That's a, not a bad way to do it. And especially when it comes to the second serve, a lot of players will throw the ball more to the left if they're right-handed and that, that gives you a sign that they're going to do a kick serve. When it comes to the flat serve, it's very hard to know exactly what's going to happen. So a much better way to do it is judge the ball after it has been struck. And now here's how I want you to approach the return of serve. You're gonna be judging the ball after it has been struck. And as soon as you see where it's going, you're make, gonna make a super explosive move. If you watch some of the best returners in the world like Djokovic or Agassi, you will see exactly this. They're not anticipating and predicting where the serve's gonna go. They make their move after the ball has been struck. And that's exactly what we want you to do. This is a far more efficient and accurate, accurate way of doing it. So you're gonna be in a ready position doing the Djokovic split step. And now when you see the ball, you make a super explosive fast move towards the appropriate side. You see this? A super fast move towards the side. As soon as you see where it's going, you make it as fast as possible. So it's almost like you're waiting here for the ball to get to you. That's how fast you have to make the move. If you watch Djokovic carefully, it looks like he has so much time, like he's waiting with this racket for the ball to get to him. That's only because he made that first move super explosive. Okay. Okay, so try it out. That's it. It was a little bit long, but that was a good looking return. Nice. Oh. Nice. Oh. Best return you hit today. Excellent. Good job. That's what's missing. You got to make yeah. that first move super explosive. And that's even true on the second serve. 
Even on a second serve, you make that first move super explosive so that in your mind it feels like you're waiting with the racket to your side as you're setting up the return of serve. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I see him a lot of times, he's like this, and then the ball's coming and he's already starting to move back and then he turns to his hip. On the kick serve, it depends on the quality of the kick serve. So you'll see a lot of guys at that elite level, they actually back up because the kick serves are hit with so much action that it's very difficult to time the ball if you were going to take it early. So that's the thing, it depends on the quality of the kicker. So at your level, 4.5, the kick is probably not going to have that much action, so you don't, might not have to back up that much. And you can try to take it a little bit earlier. But just feel it out. See, if you feel like you're stepping into the kicker and you can't really control the ball, you're not timing it well, then simply back up and hit the ball when it's falling below the apex. Okay. So just look out for how good the actual kick serve is. All right. Okay. Okay, Shamir, go in your ready position on the return and I'm going to give you some kick serves. Kick serve. And I want, you to, I want you to try to judge the kick serve and make a move accordingly. So if I hit it a little bit softer, I want you to cut off the angle and step across the body diagonally. Okay. And if it's coming a little bit heavier, I want you to do what you said, you saw Vavrinka doing this. I want you to back up and, and hit the below, ball below the apex. Okay. All right? Good, nice shot. Okay, good. Okay, there I probably should have backed up a little bit. You, see that one you needed to cut off. Okay, and that one you needed to back up. So this is why it's so important to study the ball, to judge it. It's hard, you're not, there's not much of a, I don't hear a difference. Don't listen to the difference, just you have, you have eyes, you have to look. You see where the ball, you see the trajectory of the ball. So that ball, the one that um, bounced way out, it literally landed right there. You see this. Also, so if it lands shorter, come in. Obviously. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Hey. Think about the geometry of the court. If the ball okay. is hit with kick, and it's served from, from the ad side. The ball, if it bounces here, is gonna exit the court this way. It's gonna exit the court at a very severe angle. So that's why I have to come in. You have to cut it off, otherwise you have no chance. So if it's deeper, then I have to... When it's oh. deeper, it's gonna be a less severe angle. I wasn't even looking at And the... most, well, this is why I said you have to judge yeah. the ball. Don't try to predict what's gonna happen by studying my toss or my swing pad. Just look at the ball, it's the most efficient way to do it. Okay. Yeah, so okay. if you see the, the sharper angle, you're gonna have to cut that off. The ball is coming through uh, the service box more. It's landing deep like this. You, if it's struck with kick, you probably have to back up. Okay, All right. got it. Oh, that was a good one, that was a good one. Why didn't you cut it off, Shamir? Wait, hold on, that one was kinda deep though, right? All right, don't worry about it, it bounced weird. It was a good... Do it again. Oh. All right, much better. Nice job, all right. Much better, nice Shamir. Oh, that was bad, sorry. Okay, why was it bad? Because I was in between moving up and back. I just well, there. what do you think you should have done there? Move up or back? Back. Exactly, yeah. you didn't. So you got to back up quickly. Remember, that first move has to be super fast. And then the second step is you set it up. And you back up, give yourself a little more time. Yeah. When you don't move at all, when you just stand there, you're at the mercy of the ball, and you'll have to correct your bad movement. In this case, you were hitting the ball way above your shoulder, and you gave me a real easy ball, I would have hit a winner on that It's one. hard because in such a short amount of time, you're examining the location of the ball. Or just look at the ball. Simultaneously, you have to move quick. You have to track the ball. Just track it with your eyes, and do it quickly. Try it. It's a, it's but simultaneously, a, you have to act quick. You have to, like, it's like you said, just like a quarter turn quick. So you're doing two things quick at the same time. You are. The return is not easy. I didn't say it was easy. Yeah. It takes a lot of practice. But this is what you got to try to do, okay? Okay. Come on. <sighs> nice. Good. Good. <sighs> nice shot, Shamir. Beautiful return. So Shamir, this is how you have to approach the return. You have to watch the ball in real time. However, you said you like your forehand return better, right? Yeah. Okay, so sometimes what's a good thing to do every now and then is to run around your backhand return and hit a forehand from the backhand side. Okay. Right? Now this is risky because you're going to have to do this prior to the contact. So this is a proactive move that you're going to decide to do prior to the point starting. 
Okay. Okay, so it's different from what we just did. And therefore, it's very risky because the guy might see you moving there a little early and he might take you uh, through the tee and hit a second serve ace. Okay. So this is why I keep this like as your special little surprise every now and then and don't overdo it. Okay. And basically, you want to plan ahead of time to hit a forehand from the backhand side and you're going to have to start moving towards the backhand prior to me making contact. And then give yourself a lot of room this way so you have good spacing. And then when you hit that forehand, you have to go super aggressive maybe even go for a winner because obviously you're leaving the entire court open so you can't hit a defensive shot you have to go for it okay okay all right nice any return you hit the first move has to be super fast super explosive the beginning movement? always if yeah. you do it slow you're doing it so slow right now obviously you're not timing the ball properly you're late remember first move you want to hit a forehand return from the backhand side right you decide to do this, you go, see this, like super explosive, super, in the beginning. without that, you're toast, man. You have yeah, no chance. Miss. Better. Nice, all right. Listen, Shamir, the return of serve is not an easy shot. And you don't get to break serve that often when you're playing a, a good server. It's all about being positive when you're returning and accepting that there's gonna be a lot of mistakes, there's gonna be a lot of failing along the way and try to keep a positive attitude. But the thing that I want you to remember from today's lesson is that number one, you need to be fluid in your positioning when it comes to the return, okay? Don't get stubborn and stand in the same place, but adjust your positioning according to the quality of your opponent's serve. The thing that I found worked best for you is making that super fast move as soon as you see where the ball was coming. What do you think about that one? Yeah, if I upped my intensity, I was able to get there in a better time than when I wasn't with intensity. You can't be slow. Yeah, the you return of surf, you have to be unbelievably quick on that first move. You have to make an ultra fast move as soon as you know where the ball is coming and then you have a better chance uh, to time the ball properly. And finally, adjust the amount of stroke you're gonna apply to the quality of the serve. So obviously, if the serve is coming super fast, you're gonna make a smaller turn and a smaller take back. And a lot of times what happens is even with that smaller take back, the racket still ends up going back. So don't worry about not taking racket back. It'll go back on its own anyway. And then when you have a weak serve, just do a normal a ground stroke with a full turn and a full take back. All right, Shamir, there were some really good returns there. Next time you play a match, I think you're gonna break serve a little bit easier. Let's do a racket tap. Thanks, Nick. No problem.